February 2021. While the world watched a city-sized iceberg break free from Antarctica, a team of scientists raced toward the breach, risking everything to glimpse the untouched darkness beneath. They expected lifeless mud. Instead, their cameras captured a thriving, monstrous ecosystem no human had seen. Creatures grown to unnatural size, thriving with no sunlight. Why do these Antarctic monsters exist? And what secrets did that fleeting crevice reveal? The real danger was just beginning. The ship pressed forward into the crevice, engines rumbling beneath the ice-laden air. Every meter counted. To starboard, the frozen wall of the brunt ice shelf loomed, jagged and shifting. To port, the city-sized mass of Iceberg A-74 drifted on unseen currents, its edge grinding and groaning, unpredictable as a living thing. The bridge bristled with tension. Satellite feeds flickered on the navigation screens, tracking the ever-narrowing canyon. At its tightest, the gap was less than twice the ship's width. No one spoke above a whisper. Ice spotters at the bow radioed back every fresh crack and flow. The captain's voice, steady and clipped, cut through the static. We have one chance. If the wind changes, we're trapped. Dr. Patricia Escate, expedition co-chief, hovered by the operations console, scanning the ice charts. She knew the window would not last. The gap created by A-74's calving was already closing, pinched by tides and the slow, relentless pressure of moving ice. The team had planned for months, but the final approach came down to hours. A sudden shift, a shudder in the hull, and the ship's alarms chirped. Pressure from the ice was increasing. The captain ordered engines to half speed, maneuvering through a corridor that only days before had been locked beneath 50 years of solid ice. On the main deck, Technicians readied the remotely operated vehicle, the ROV, its lights and cameras gleaming against the Antarctic twilight. The ROV, a lifeline into the unknown, would soon descend past the shelf's edge into darkness. Every system was checked and double-checked. Cables coiled, batteries charged, telemetry tested. The scientists understood what was at stake. If the ice shifted, the ship could be trapped or crushed. The ROV lost to the abyss. Yet hesitation meant losing the only chance to witness a world untouched for decades. The bridge became a hive of quiet urgency. Ice movement data streamed in from the German ice office, showing the gap narrowing by the hour. The captain coordinated with the chief navigator, plotting a course that skirted the thickest flows. Dr. Esquete briefed the ROV team. Once we're in position, we launch. No delays. If the ice closes, we abort. As the ship slid into the shadow of the iceberg, the scale of the challenge became clear. The walls of ice rose higher than a cathedral, groaning and cracking with every tide. Somewhere below, in the black water, a hidden world waited. The countdown to launch began. Every second, the passage narrowed. The scientists stood ready, hearts pounding, as the ROV was lowered toward the abyss. The ROV slipped beneath the ice, its floodlights slicing through a darkness untouched for half a century. For a moment, the only thing visible was the endless black, no glint, no movement, just the silent weight of water pressing in from every side. The pilot's hands hovered over the controls, breath caught as the camera panned across the seabed. Textbooks had always insisted on what to expect, a wasteland, mud, scattered rocks, Maybe the pale outline of a dead worm. Down here, with no sunlight, life should have been impossible. But then, in the narrow cone of light, something moved. Not just one thing, a flurry of shapes, a scattering of shadows. The pilot whispered no way into the headset, voice barely audible above the hum of thrusters. The feed sharpened. The rocks were not bare. Every surface teemed with life, pale arms of anemones swaying in unseen currents, sponges rising in silent towers, brittle stars crawling in slow, deliberate arcs. Some of the creatures were familiar, but others looked wrong, too large, too many limbs, colors that shimmered like oil in the cold glow. There was no barren plain. Instead, the camera revealed a city of living things, stacked and layered, each fighting for space and food. The team watching from the control room fell silent, eyes wide. Every expectation, every scientific certainty dissolved with each new frame. Tiny crabs scuttled between sponges that dwarfed them. Sea cucumbers grazed on drifting particles, their bodies translucent and ghostly. 
Anemones clustered together, their tentacles catching what little food the currents carried from far above. The pilot edged the ROV closer to a cluster of sponges, some stretched nearly half a meter tall, their surfaces dusted with fine silt. A sudden flicker, a sea spider with legs impossibly long tiptoed across the colony. Its body was pale and swollen, almost translucent as if the darkness had seeped into its skin. No one spoke for a full minute. The only sound was the faint static of the feed and the distant creak of the ice overhead. In that first hour, the old belief in a dead, empty world was swept away. Every new corner brought another surprise. Clusters of filter feeders, ancient corals branching from the rocks, strange worms writhing in the sediment. The textbooks had been wrong. There was no emptiness here. There was only life, thriving, crowded, and utterly alien. The pilot's final words before the feed was logged were simple. It was like nothing he'd ever seen. It shouldn't be possible. The seafloor beneath the vanished ice shelf unfurled like a landscape from another planet. Every inch of exposed rock was crowded with life. Sponges, some older than any living tree, rose in silent towers, their bodies dusted with the fine silt of centuries. Anemones clung to the hard surfaces, their pale arms unfurling in the slow, perpetual current, reaching for invisible food drifting through the black water. Between the mats of brittle stars overlapped in tangled colonies, arms weaving and unwinding in patterns older than memory. No sunlight had touched this place for half a century, yet the density of creatures rivaled any coral reef. Filter feeders blanketed the rocks, their bodies pressed together so tightly that bare stone was rare. Delicate feather stars, each with dozens of slender arms, perched atop sponges like sentinels, sifting the water for drifting particles. Sea cucumbers, ghostly and translucent, grazed along the sediment, leaving faint trails in the soft mud. Small crabs darted between clusters of tube worms, their shells gleaming in the ROV's cold light. Movement was everywhere, but nothing hurried. Life here unfolded at a different pace. Some of the sponges measured nearly half a meter across, their size hinting at centuries of slow, patient growth. Corals branched from the rock in pale, intricate fans, their skeletons etched with the story of every passing year. Even the smallest creatures, tiny amphipods, scale worms, and squat lobsters, found shelter in the crowded maze, each niche occupied, each crevice alive. The water above pressed down with the weight of a skyscraper, and the temperature hovered just below freezing. Still, this community thrived, drawing sustenance from the faintest traces of organic matter swept in by distant currents. Here, in the perpetual dark, life had adapted to the impossible, flourishing without sunlight, building a reef of bodies atop stone and silt. The ROV's lights skimmed over this alien garden, revealing a world as beautiful as it was unexpected. A city of survivors hidden beneath the Antarctic ice. In the cold spotlight of the remotely operated vehicle, the true monsters of the Antarctic deep came into focus. A sea spider, legs stretched impossibly long, drifted over the sponges like a puppet on invisible strings. Its body was barely larger than a coin, but each limb extended outward for nearly a foot, so thin, so pale, it seemed more shadow than flesh. The camera followed as it moved with slow, deliberate steps, probing the darkness with arms that looked too fragile to belong to anything alive. This was no ordinary spider. In these waters, the rules of size and shape had been rewritten. Nearby, a giant isopod lumbered across the sediment, its armored shell gleamed like wet stone, segmented plates overlapping in a prehistoric pattern. Where its relatives in warmer seas might fit in your palm, this one stretched nearly the length of a dinner plate. The remotely operated vehicle's laser scale flickered across its back, confirming what the scientists already suspected. This was polar gigantism made real. Dr. Esquete's voice, low and measured, filtered through the control room. You are looking at an animal whose organs are so long they run down its legs. The cold lets them grow slow, but it also lets them grow huge. In Antarctica's freezing, oxygen-rich depths, metabolism slows to a crawl. Each heartbeat is a measured risk, each movement a calculation. The abundance of dissolved oxygen means creatures do not need to rush. Instead, they can invest in size. Sea spiders, pycnogonids, become so large that their vital organs, gut, reproductive tissue, even their circulatory system, extend into their limbs, filling every available space. It is a solution born of necessity and opportunity, 
a way to survive in a world where food is rare and energy must be hoarded. Isopods, too, take advantage of this deep sea loophole. With fewer predators and endless cold, they can afford to grow slowly, layer by layer, year by year. Their armored bodies serve as both shield and storage, holding on to every calorie that drifts down from above. Some individuals may live for decades, growing larger with each passing year, until they become the giants that haunt the Antarctic seabed. The effect is unsettling, a landscape where familiar shapes are warped by pressure and time. Legs stretch impossibly long, bodies swell and thicken, eyes shrink to pinpricks or vanish altogether. In the darkness beneath the ice, evolution has favored the monstrous and the strange. Each creature is a survivor, a product of the cold's slow, relentless arithmetic. And in the flickering light of the remotely operated vehicle, they move with a patience that borders on the eternal. Antarctic octopuses, scattered across distant coasts and islands, carry a genetic memory that links them to a single ancient population. DNA samples taken from specimens around the continent reveal a surprising truth. These creatures were once connected, their ancestors able to move freely beneath ice sheets that at times must have collapsed entirely. The genetic signatures match not just between neighboring bays, but across thousands of kilometers, as if a hidden highway once ran beneath the frozen ceiling. In the code of these animals lies a warning. The ice has vanished before, and when it did, entire worlds shifted. The seafloor beneath the ice is more than a city of monsters. It is a time capsule. Some of the sponges rising from the rocks have been growing since before the first satellites circled the Earth. Antarctic sponges and corals grow at a pace almost impossible to imagine, millimeters in a decade, centimeters in a lifetime. Sclerochronology, the science of reading growth bands in their skeletons, reveals ages stretching back centuries. A glass sponge the size of a soccer ball might be 400 years old. A coral fan, etched by currents and dusted with silt, could have begun its slow ascent before the American Revolution. Each living pillar is a record of patience, built grain by grain in the darkness, enduring every shift of current and every tremor of ice above. This slow motion existence is not limited to the giants. Even the smallest filter feeders and anemones may live for decades, their lives measured not in seasons, but in centuries. In this world, survival is a matter of waiting, waiting for food to drift in on unseen currents, waiting for the ice to move, waiting for the next great change, the pace is glacial, the stakes immense. Every organism is both survivor and witness, carrying the history of vanished ice and the promise and threat of what comes next. The discovery of these ancient lives, encoded in genes and etched in stone, is a reminder that the Antarctic deep is not just a place of monsters, but a living archive of Earth's past upheavals. Sunlight, once locked out by a ceiling of ice, now pours down in relentless waves. The first rays strike water that has not seen the sky in half a century. Almost immediately, a chemical chain reaction begins. Microscopic algae, dormant or drifting at the edge of darkness, seize their chance. Fueled by light and a sudden surge of nutrients from melting ice, they multiply with astonishing speed. The water, once clear and cold, turns cloudy green as these single-celled invaders bloom. For the ancient creatures below, sunlight is not a gift. It is a warning. Shade-loving sponges and corals, adapted to darkness and slow, measured growth, find themselves outpaced. Algae blooms choke the water, robbing oxygen and blocking the particle drift that once fed the seafloor. Filter feeders, tuned to the faintest trickle of marine snow, now compete with a flood of surface-born life. Fast-growing newcomers, worms, crustaceans, even predatory jellies move in, thriving on the chaos. The slow, patient giants of the deep are pushed aside by a new sunlit order. The transformation is swift and irreversible. A world shaped by darkness begins to vanish, not with a crash, but with the silent arrival of light. Beneath the vanished ceiling of ice, the Antarctic seafloor has been more than a home for strange and ancient life. It has served as a vault, quietly locking away carbon for centuries. Every sponge, every coral, Every layer of silt on the bottom holds the remains of countless meals. Tiny fragments of organic matter drifted down or swept in by distant currents, then buried, sealed in the cold and dark. Sediment cores from these regions show up to 20 kilograms of carbon stored in each square meter, accumulated grain by grain. 
For decades, this hidden store has helped keep carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, acting as a break on the planet's rising temperatures. But the loss of the ice shelf is not just a change in scenery. When the protective lid is removed, sunlight and storms stir the water and the vault is disturbed. Sediments are resuspended, releasing carbon that had been locked away. Fast-growing newcomers, algae, worms, and opportunists move in, breaking down the old stores even faster. Some estimates warn that up to one half of the carbon held in these sediments could be released within decades, a slow leak from the ocean's coldest bank. Dr. Esquete said that what we are seeing is not just a new ecosystem, but the undoing of a natural safeguard. The Antarctic deep, once a silent ally in the fight against climate change, now stands exposed, its secrets and its carbon at risk. Today, as the ice retreats faster than ever, each break exposes worlds we barely understand, and it threatens to erase them before we can grasp their secrets. These hidden giants help lock away carbon that shapes our climate's future. In Antarctica's darkness, the true monsters may not be what lives below, but what we unleash above. What would you risk to see what's left before it disappears?